Okay, let's begin. This is the last session of the first day of Landscapia. Um, and I'm very happy to welcome Jose Calderon Infante from CERN, who will tell us about higher spin symmetry and infinite distance and its stringy origin. Okay. Thanks a lot for the presentation. Thanks a lot for everybody for coming back from the coffee. And let me also thank the organizer for putting all this together and for giving me this opportunity. So I'm going to talk, I mean, this talk is going to have two fairly separated talks, uh, parts. The first one will be about higher spin symmetry and arguing that they are always at infinite distance. And the second one, I will rather ask about the stringy origin, where to find the string theory. So the first one will be based in this paper in collaboration with Florent Bohm. And the second one will be about uh, ongoing work with Irena Valenzuela. So let me start with some motivation. So I'm going to introduce very quickly the Swamland distance conjecture, which is very known to us. This conjecture is about the modular space of the theory as parameterized by the VEF of massless scalars. And then the conjecture says that if I start some point here and then I go geodesically to infinite distance, I will always find a tower of states as with infinite number of states that will become exponentially massless as I explore the infinite distance limit. And not only this, nowadays we actually enjoy precise order one bounds on this parameter alpha, both in the lightest tower and also in how the species scale, which is the quantum gravity cutoff we're going to fall off. And even more, Today, we also enjoy a pattern that seems to connect these two things. So we are getting a lot of understanding about this conjecture. There is more progress about it. You know, we have a lot of top-down evidence, both from string theory. I can simply not cite all of the papers. So let me just put a few of them. Also in ADS CFT, which is what I'm going to focus on. We have some proposals for bottom-up motivation, why this should be true based on first principles. And there is connections to other conjectures. We have phenomenological implications. There is a lot of work in this conjecture, so it's something to care about. So as I was saying, I'm going to focus in the ADS-CFT side of the, of the story. So first, I will explain how this conjecture looks in ADS-CFT. So essentially, I will try to give the exercise of taking the conjecture in ADS, and I will just translate it to the CFT. So this question was already asked in these two papers. And in particular, in this one, they put a very sharp conjecture, very well-defined conjecture. And it is about the conformal manifold of any local CFT in more than two dimensions. So for that, let me first explain what is the conformal manifold. The conformal manifold is nothing but the dual of the moduli space. So now, instead of being parameterized by the VEF of massless scalars, it's going to be parameterized by exactly marginal couplings. These are couplings that no matter what value I give to them, the theory remains conformal, which is very non-trivial, because the theory can be very strongly coupled, it's still conformal. Then when I say local CFT, what I mean is that it possesses an energy momentum tensor. This is very important because that means in area CFT that in the bulk I have a spin to graviton. So that means that I am actually talking about gravity, that gravity is dynamical. And within this framework, because d bigger than 2 is just more than two dimensions, this conjecture are three parts. The first one is that any higher spin point must be at infinite distance. What do I mean with this? So imagine I'm here at some point, and as I approach it, I find that my conformal algebra enhances to a new global symmetry, a larger one, that is a higher spin symmetry. So essentially what I get are conserved currents, as usual, but these currents are not a spin one. They have a spin two, three, four, five. They have higher spins. So then this conjecture is telling us that this cannot happen in some random point of the conformal manifold. should always happen at infinite distance. This is the first part. It's called part of the conjecture. Also says the converse the statement. This is that all of these infinite distance limits, they should all be higher spin points. So whenever I go to infinite distance, I should find this enhancement to a higher spin algebra. And last but not least, the third part is telling me that if I consider the anomalous dimension that is essentially measuring the mass of these higher spin fields in the ADS, it is going to go to zero exponentially with the distance, which recovers the exponential in the distance conjecture. Okay? So then once you have this very sharp conjecture in the CFT, you can ask a very nice question, which is, can we actually prove it? Can I go to... CFT, which is a very well-defined framework. Can I put my assumptions? Can I prove the conjecture? And in fact, in this paper, we combine conformal perturbation theory with higher spin symmetry for, most importantly, establish the first part. So we can really prove that any higher spin point should be at infinite distance. But not only that, for point two, we cannot say much, but we have a finite versus infinite distance criterion that essentially takes the question, is this point at infinite or finite distance, and translates it to information about the CFT data, something you can try to uh, get constraints on. And for the third part, what we find is that as you approach a higher spin point, the alpha that appears in this exponential is encoded in a very particular three-point function evaluated at the higher spin point, which is nice because now you can try to take theories that enjoy this higher spin symmetry, they are extremely constrained, and you can try to study this coefficient. Put bounds, see if it is non-zero, and all that. So let me 
say, let me stress that for this, we put no extra assumptions. So really, the assumptions that we put are those of the conjecture. We impose the existence of a conformal manifold, that the theory is local, and there is more than two dimensions. For instance, we don't assume any supersymmetry. Supersymmetry could be required to guarantee the existence of the conformal manifold, but the proof doesn't use it. It could be underlined, but it doesn't use it. And the existence of the energy momentum tensor is very crucial. Without it, there is a particular step in which my proof will fail dramatically. So let me then give some sketch of the proof. Outside of the higher spin point is a descendant because it's essentially the divergence of J of the higher spin current. But in the higher spin point becomes a primary. I will review a bit how this K appears. So let me just give a sketch of the proof. For those of you that have already heard like five times this sketch of the proof in different conferences, no worries. Please pay attention because I have a, a slightly modified version. <laughs> So the idea is that imagine that I am the conformal manifold, and now I take here a higher spin point and a neighborhood, and now let me consider a trajectory. So I focus in this trajectory parameterized by t. Now, what I can do is that in any of these points, I can draw the will be tangent vector, and in the CFT, this is a marginal operator. So essentially, restricting myself to a trajectory is to restrict myself to a given marginal operator. And then I can apply conformal perturbation theory to write down this equation. Then I can impu impose conformal symmetry and finally get to this equation that essentially is telling me that as I go along this trajectory, the change in the anomalous dimension of a higher spin is related to this uh, CJJO that is just encoding some information about this three-point function. So, so far, the only thing that I have done is to take two pieces of the CFT data and relate them along the trajectory. Now, one could say, okay, but you are taking one trajectory, what happens if you take another one? So, if I take another trajectory, I'm just taking another marginal operator or even another one, more crazy one. So essentially what we are learning here is that this O that I'm putting here is telling me what is the trajectory that I'm considering. This is going to be very relevant later. And now, if I also take that the two-point function of this scalar is correctly normalized, then this is going to be the sum logic of distance that appear in the CFT distance conjecture. So you might imagine why this equation is good for testing this conjecture, because it's essentially telling me how the anomalous dimension is going to vary with the distance in a certain trajectory. So then, putting this aside, the other ingredient is, of course, an ingredient that will tell me why higher spin points are special. So I'm going to use weakly broken higher spin symmetry. What is the point? The point is that as I approach this, this point, I know that the divergence of the, car of the uh, concert current will go to zero with some parameter that will depend on t. And the only thing that I'm going to impose is that this g goes to zero as t approaches the higher spin point. So here I actually put in that the trajectory must approach the higher spin point. Why is this useful? Because essentially I'm just breaking a symmetry. And that means that I can take the correlators, I can expand them in a series of G. And in particular, well, let me first explain how this goes, but very sketchy. The idea is that as G goes to zero, I can take the divergence of the correlator, and then it will just spit out a G and change the J by a K, just by using this equation. Since this one contains the information about CJJO, and this one the information about CJKO, then it's reasonable that in the expansion, the order G will be controlled by GKO, and the same for KKO, OK? But what is the point here? The point is that, well, first of all, this is a bit more complicated, but you can check the paper to see how to do it step by step more carefully, right? But in this case, it just works. Uh, for this, uh, for <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but for this sketch of the proof, it's, it's easy enough. So the important point here is that in this expansion, all of the correlators are evaluated at the highest spin point. So that means that I enjoy higher spin symmetry, I can impose it. And if I impose it, what I can prove for you, I won't do it here, is that these two must vanish. This looks a bit scary to use higher spin symmetry, but really it's just another global symmetry. It's not even a P-form symmetry, it's not even an invertible symmetry, just a normal symmetry. So really this kind of cancellation is the kind of cancellation that you get in a, in a global symmetry when the operator that you put in the correlator don't adapt to zero charge. The same thing, it's just that you have to work it out. But then, as g goes to zero, one can also show that the anomalous dimension will also behave as g squared, and that means that I can prove this for you, okay? And this is essentially the constraint that I will put now. So now, if I consider again my trajectory and I put these two constraints together, I have this kind of equation, which, by the way, is nothing but the bound proposed in the species scale in this paper, but an asymptotic version. It's not a version that holds at any point of modular space, but I can prove it rigorously as I go to a higher spin point, so asymptotically. This is important for us because if I take this kind of differential equation with this constraint and I try to solve it, I will get that gamma L will go to zero only if T goes to infinity. 
which means that the high grade spin point is reached at infinite distance along this trajectory. And this is actually very easy to understand. This equation is telling me that gamma cannot go faster than an exponential to zero. And the exponential takes an infinite distance to go to zero. So it will take an infinite distance. But then one could say, okay, so you are restricting yourself to a trajectory and you are showing that the high grade spin point is at infinite distance along that trajectory. This doesn't mean that the point is at infinite distance. So what about another trajectory? But that's fine. Because remember that another trajectory is just another operator. I can just change here O to O prime and the argument will go through for another trajectory and for another one, same thing. So that means that what I want to say is essentially that this constraint here works for every O and this is for any trajectory approaching the higher spin point. So I show to you that any trajectory you might think of will reach it at infinite distance. So the higher spin point is really at infinite distance. Not only that, for completeness, I can show this to you for any JL, and that means for any higher spin point. So essentially what I'm showing here, the conclusion is that all higher spin points are at infinite distance, which is the first part of the shift distance conjecture, now proven, okay? So to put a summary, let me give the status of the conjecture so far. So as I was saying, the first part one can prove using conformal perturbation theory and higher spin symmetry. For the second one, what I can mention is that it's this CFT distance criterion that we give. If I find that this CJJO is non-vanishing, then, then this is a sufficient condition, but not necessary, for the point to be at finite distance. So if now you can come to me and tell me that with no higher spin symmetry, this must be true, which I don't know how to prove, then you prove the, the second part. But it's, so far it's a question. For the third part, remember that actually the equation that we got was this thing as gamma L goes to zero. So if now I'm able to show that there exists a node, so there exists a trajectory, such that this thing at the higher spin point, so as I approach it, doesn't vanish, I am showing that it has to fall exponentially because I just get the equation of an exponential. Again, I cannot show it to you, but it's just an interesting question for the future. So these are very interesting questions because it will be amazing to prove the conjecture right in the CFT. But in the next part, I'm going to move to a more explorative uh, question, and I will ask for the stringy nature of these higher spin points. So essentially, if I go to a string theory and I build an ADS vacuum, what are these higher spin points? What make them special? It's a very good question. So at the moment you have the control of the manifold, yeah. that means that actually you have operators in two boxes. So essentially the operator is expanding the tangent of space. Yeah. So when I say I choose an operator, I will choose the operator as a vector field in the control of the manifold. Got it. In fact, <laughs> the group doesn't need that, because remember that the group was always locally the highest point. Yeah. So in fact, I just need to do it in the highest point. Is it clear? It breaks down if you take the spin to be two or one. For spin one, it's clear, and it's that I cannot show the vanishing of CJKO. It just breaks down. And for spin two, for spin two, we need to think about it a bit more carefully. But I think I think it didn't work either. But I can check. It. I can check it in computation. I mean, that, that case is a little weird, and you know, we we can. I'm happy to discard that case because it means you have multiple stress tensors. It's yeah, not yeah, as yeah, nice yeah. as the other cases. But it would be nice. No, but still, any time you decouple, you are getting stress tensors, right? You are decoupling a subset of the CFT, so you know that. Yeah. Okay, so then for the second part, I will go to something less rigorous, more explorative, in which I will just ask what are these higher spin points in the conformal manifold from the stringy perspective. So for that, let me take some inspiration in the emergence string conjecture that is telling us that in the distance conjecture, whenever I go to infinite distance, the tower will be either tower of KK modes, so a decompactification, or the excitations of a weakly coupled string. And for us, this is going to be very important because they have very distinct features in the sense that the KK tower has no higher spin fields, while the string have, uh, does. So that means that the expectation will be that the higher spin points are in a one-to-one -one correspondence to a string. Maybe. So essentially, I expect to get weakly coupled strings in the conformal manifold. However, then this raises as a problem because I'm telling you that I'm having a string that is becoming tensionless in ADS. And that means that in this limit, the string is quantized in a highly curved background, which is something very hard to study, or at least something that is not, not trivial at all. And that means that I won't be able to just go there, you know, and study the string and give you what are the properties. So this is why I'm going to, to take the more explorative approach of rely on the CFT results that I can derive from the CFT, and then just try to extract clues. So fine question, funny questions. Hmm? 
Yes. Click stream coupling. Yeah, we will coupling. We will go to see. No, but yes, but but uh, why, why why did you deduce from the in the previous slide? There. The, ah, the stream will be will be coupling. Yes. Ah, because the highest stream point stream. Uh, okay. 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 Sorry, okay. Thanks. Uh, okay. Thank you. So then, as you were saying uh, before, that every infinite distance limit could be a higher spin field. Are you saying that there are no KK limits, or that they are always going to be uh, accompanied by a string tower? Okay. Um, the conditions that there are not going to be KK towers. And you can think about it from the noise scale separation. In noise scale separation, the JKT and all these examples is that you have a flux. So it's not a continuous parameter. And with the few minutes, the KK falls, but the ADS falls faster. I'm asking, in the conform manifold, I will be asking for something way more dramatic. I will be asking for an ADS that is fixed and an extra dimension that I can just do, tune, whatever I want. It's very difficult. Yeah, but for example, in I mean, it lasts, at least in flat space, you can get la, in D uh, lower than nine. You can get like a string towers, but they are always accompanied by Kiki towers. So maybe there was something like sim similar here. Kind of happening the other way around. That we never get a KK. I, I will show actually an example of this. Limit fixed, right? Fixed conformal anomaly. In the CFT, do you look at? Yes, I think that's that's the point. Yeah. It's a conformal. Yeah. It's proven that we have to change the conformal. Yes, that's right. By a manual project. Yes. So then, going on, uh, what I need to do is a distal project. Because for those of you that are going to use the distal conjecture, typically, if I tell you the value of alpha, so this is exponential rate, you will guess the nature of the tab. So if I, for those of you that have worked with this, if I write these two equations, you will tell, aha, this is a compatibility, and this is a However, if you put that area, and if it seems that, you know, like it's not that easy, and this might be not as easy as just getting the value and saying what it is, then it's about But I still let me take this philosophy that if I get different values of alpha, I expect that the tau is different. Okay? And for that, now I'm going to restrict to a very particular setup, so I'm going to restrict to 4D superconformal field theory that have seen single bit group, and the further one at least permits some large M. Then, in this paper, it was already computed that actually you get three values of alpha. This, on one hand, is surprising, on the other hand, is also surprising. Because in the CFT, it's surprising because you have really a smooth mode. You have a lot of them. And still, the ones that are being like them, only three values, which is surprising. From the stream side, it's maybe even more surprising because if I take this philosophy, this suggests like having three different streams in the S and less than philosophy from. So then, you could say, okay, this is suggesting three different streams, but I have a problem is that none of them have the one over the square root of three that I will expect here. Actually, if you play the game of trying to match these equations, you will get that they match this one with n equals three, four, and six. So the, the compatibility is to eight, nine, and the reclamation. So like, what's going on? And what is going on is that we just found in the space <laughs> because you already pointed it out in the talk in not from London, but in Washington, in Madrid. So when you have a puzzle, what are we going to do? So let's have to take a step back and see how we get this value. So for instance, this one you can get it for, for example, in the other ones, in any quarts of square of okay? This one in any quarts of square of okay? But this one is the one of any quarts of square of And now we know that any quarts of square means is the dual type to be in the square of square So at the very least, let us try to understand how this value comes and why it's not one of the square of three, that is the value that we find this value. So for that, I'm going to build the convex hull for the ADS 5 cos x but first I'm going to ask how I'm doing time. Here we go. Ah, OK, <laughs> So the idea is that I'm going to take type to B. I'm going to compact the final sphere. I'm going to take the kind of effective fraction, where I already can can be normalized on the B. This one, we control the zip coupling. This one, we control the final sphere value. And then I can compute how they get the other holes in plant units. And the same for the And as we are used, right now, what I'm going to do is to take this information and encode it in a couple of vectors. So then I can build the complex hull condition and check that the sharp and distance conjecture seems to be violated, which is something you don't like. And not only that, uh, you find that the projection of this point here, because in the modular space of energy style specified, this R half is fixed, so I have to take this for constant. The value that you get is 1 over 2 as well as 2, which is of course not 1 over 2, so you are not even reducing the value of the zero. 
So we are feeling a pass. But this is not that weird because, in particular, this is the limit in which the radius of the string is equal to one lat. So, as I was saying before, you are comparing a string in a high input background, so you cannot trust the position of this function. So, what I'm going to do next is to try to replicate this exercise by the default force in the CFT, something that I can trust. So, for that, first, what are the calculations that I have? So, the calculations that I have in this particular set are going to be the operators that obey this equation, so I can back out this. But now, what happens is that there is no sharp definition for the distance in the n direction. We have a sharp definition in the local monitors, some really cosmetic, but not in the direction of that. And that means that we would expect that n will increase exponentially fast with some distance, but I cannot, so what I'm going to do is just put that distance to the gravity. So at the end of the day, I will be able to give everything neither for the CFT or for the top, and we need to manage. So we need to use all information out. Once I do this, I just go over the game so because it's actually impossible, and then I go this. <laughs> the string here are the highest in concept current, as I was saying. So then I can compute the anomaly dimension for the top expansion for the small top coupling, which is what like this. So then I get this. In this case, the distance in the direction G we control with the subject of metric. It can be computed exactly because this is what goes to the symmetry, and we get this. So if I put again the supergravity plus this, I get this. So now again, let's put it as two dots, and I get this on this one, which now does not vary the shape of this objection, first of all. And second of all, let me now say this by a comparison. So a summary of the comments half is that in ADS 5 plus 5, we found this comments half, and we say, OK, this region is still valid. So at the end of the day, what we have done in the is to really take the comments half in the ADS side in the region in which I can trust it, and the region and the CFT on the south in the region I can trust it and we do it together. But there is something we will take up here and it's that they do together. Nice. It will be in a very weird way. Actually, we are going to see now cases in which this doesn't happen. And not only this, as I was saying, now there is no violation of the chapter distance conjecture, so one can summarize this in this video. So, furthermore, now if I project this value, of course I will recover the CFT value because I'm putting it in. But at the end of the day, what I want to convey here is just that one can understand really that this value comes from the time to be a string. It's just that you have to be careful. You don't know how to come to us in ADX for a very, uh, for a very uh, dangerous thing. So since this is the uh, scale separation uh, talks, uh, let me actually now take an interview and I'm going to discuss the relation between this exercise that I need and scale separation. So notice that I wrote down this. And as Thomas already explained, this means automatically that I have to the separation of the CFT. So what I'm going to do is to relax this condition. So I'm going to take this condition, I'm going to relax it by putting a parameter. And from the CFT, well, first let me argue that this, this parameter I'm taking is just going to be the CFT is not going to be parameter for those of you that are familiar. And then in the CFT, what I'm doing is just allow me for a very weird DPS spectrum. So I'm essentially allowing for a spectrum of DPS operators that as I take the logic limit, the first DPS operator is higher and higher at uh, at capture. This is something that doesn't happen in the course of the but I want to play the exercise to see what I get. And for those of you that are not yet more, more into mobile stabilization, actually what I'm changing is the S5 stabilization. I'm changing how the vacuum the, the modulus S5 talks to the to the area of If I do this, long story short, I will just take the CFT, I will just take the ADS, I will take the regime validity, and it will glue together the common salts. And then if I allow beta to be bigger than 1 over 2, which is anti scale separation in the sense that the Kalusha time tower is not the ADS scale, but it's lower, not higher, so it's not the space separation we want, then I will get this. <laughs> so as you can see here, there are two things. First, the common salt doesn't glue together nice anymore. And actually, this seems a bit pathological because if I tune the direction, there seems to be some kind of this discontinuity here. So they don't seem to agree, they get some of the CFT. And furthermore, one finds that violation of the sharp distance conjecture uh, <laughs> from the CFT is very <coughs> What if I do the same, but now for a scale separation? Now I take beta to be smaller than one half, and then I have to include the screen because it's becoming irrelevant, before it was not relevant, and I find essentially the same. Now what I find is that again, the common solve don't do together with what already seems quite pathological. And second, that I again find a violation of the sharper, but now it's in the back. And because it is in, it's in the back, now I have to give a bit of a caveat, because notice that the violation is in the regime in which the string is not in the highly perfect ES, 
but it's in a highly perfect spiral. So they want to worry about the quantization of this string, whether this will be in control or not. I would say it is because maybe the S5 modes are very weird, but the ones that propagate in the ADS probably won't go this in ADS, which is weird. But okay, one can try to solve it. This equation is equivalent to take an orbit fold of the S5. You don't get a straight separation if you take an orbit fold of the S5. Notice that I'm doing something way more dramatic. I'm not only taking the KK scale and pushing it forward by another one, I am really changing the parametrics. How they scale in the larger limit. Yeah, this is something that, that uh, as, as Thomas was explaining, this is bizarre in the CFT. This looks very, very bizarre. Um, so, yeah, but all in all, the message that I wanted to convey is that even though this is just some kind of game that I just played, it kind of suggests some link between this chart and this projection. You have a conformal manifold and no straight separation. Because notice that the moment I break it, everything fades down. Okay? So, let me now continue with the purpose of the talk. One of the others. I explained that the one with the square root of two seems to be the new type of the string. That's okay, but what about the other? So, this one okay, this one are these new strings, as I suggested in a previous slide, or is it the same string by with the bucket? This is the question we can ask. <laughs> so at least what I can say is that then we have very different elements. Why? Because one can take the equation in this paper for us, but what can we write in terms of only A over C, which are the two central charges of all the CFT? And this, in any CFT, is known to be relevant for various aspects of the low energy effective field that we get in the case. For instance, a very nice result is that if A is different from C and that A, there is no weekly capital in the description of low energy. And that automatically means that for these two values, this will not have a nice thing with the capital and low energy. So, for instance, a way of explaining this to yourself physically is that in this same was super conformal QCD, which is this case, the software demonstrated that there were DPS higher in the So, this means, you can just check it, that there is no higher in that. That means that at any point in the mobile space, and we have higher in like things, that we could be able break my Einstein gap. And then one can actually take this equation, use these three values to take the three values that you have for A over C, because all these three values are only three values. And then one can ask whether there is any special about these values. I don't know, maybe yes, maybe no. So far, it's a good for thought. And to finish very, very quickly, let me just point out of a candidate for one of these new things from the top down. And is that in this setup, you have just a five of the final set K, and the set K is an S1 column before singularity. And then there is a very particular limit that is only driven by actions, that is a limit that will typically consider to be a final distance. But then you go to the CFT, and the CFT predicts infinite distance and higher spins, so the CFT is some convention. And then you can ask what is the thing here, these higher spins from the bottom. And you see that because of the limit you are taking, and not explaining it, the fundamental spin remains stationary. So it cannot be the fundamental spin, but it could be the one that is giving the higher spin most. However, one can check that if you take a DC brain and wrap it with the blue up to cycles of the singularity, it does become tensionless, and it is a BS strain whose tension is not really fast. But, you know, this is a string that is living only in negative 5 plus S1. So this is a fundamentally six-dimensional string. So, I mean, I know, but looking at this uh, set of all states, I would say that this is a very interesting candidate for a new emerging string in the years, one that would not be very uh, straightforward related to our typical identity. So to finish with some conclusion, let me just say that there is much to learn about the distance objection in the CFT, which is a very interesting direction. Not only about it, but also from it. For instance, in the CFT side, one would say, what about the rest of the CFT distance objection? We need to do it. What about the equals two? I didn't see anything about the equals two. The second is very different, but one can try also to understand it. Can you define a distance in the center of some direction? Because I said that this is what I was missing. In order to get everything from the CFT, it would be nice to have it. And from the string side, one can ask whether there really exists near string in the edge, in the group, I just give some clues. What makes different strings with different alpha different, so what are different microscopically? And what about these three, these big grains that we want to cycle of the lowest in the edge? Are they really a string that will give me an infinite amount of high-speed pop, uh, high-speed fields? Is something different? Okay, that's it. Thank you for your attention.
Okay, thanks for a very nice talk. Questions? Um, so I have uh, two questions. So uh, when you in the first part, when you derived uh, this this bound and that was valid for all uh, the OPE coefficients, I was wondering if uh, if this is useful to somehow like classify or, or like yeah see which CFTs are indeed like consistent. Whether this can be seen as a consistency requirement, or does it on the CFT side not give any further insight? I mean, it's something that it's just uh, happens for any CFT that has an extension intention and is approaching a higher speed zone. So I don't know, I mean, like, it's a constraint of CFTs, but in the sense that I can deny it. So I'm just imposing that the CFT has a stressing intention, I'm imposing high speed symmetry, I get the result. Okay. And then um, when you were talking about uh, ADS5 process 5, um, I was wondering, you, I, th I got the impression that you changed the scale of fields like only the scalar fields, but of course then you run into the issue that you do not end up in a vacuum if you do not change the flux. So I was wondering whether you take that into account and uh, like maybe a related comment is that uh, last week we uh, read a paper well, that has a proposal of doing these kind of things with tachyons. So. Yeah, I'm taking a totally different perspective. Rather what I'm doing is just to say, okay, I have two ADS backward, I can put a different range into the flux, and then we'll give me some solution. So I'm running solution from one to the other. Or for instance, I can even do something else. We know that the ADS 5 process 5 is the mean horizon limit of the supergravity solution for a stack of different brains. So now you can just flow the different mm -hmm. And this will give you something that is conjectured to be an RG flow in the CFT, where things one can say, and I'm taking this other perspective. I don't want to include any other kind of things. I want to stay there, and then we just want to follow some kind of flow and complete the distance at given by the term. And then one will ask what happens with the potential, maybe the potential should be entered the distance. Yeah. So you, you move to the three brains basically, in that sense. Yes. Okay. And then follow go to the area. Okay. Questions? Thanks. Uh, could you say a bit more about the D3 brains that become tensionless? Like, why are they becoming tensionless? Is it because the two cycle is going to, to zero or something? Or? No, the two cycle is stabilized already at zero. So the two ah, cycle okay. is zero volume. Okay. But then I have the contribution for the B field and the C field. Okay. So actually I have the B field and the C field integrated okay, okay, okay. lower. They give me the action. And only when I take them to zero, these D3 become tensionless. Ah, okay. okay. Are, are these related to little string theories? Not sure. What I know is that in the flat space case, so if I take the orbifold not in ADS5 process 5, but the orbifold to the flat space case, these strings are known to be non critical and give you only a finite number of states. Yeah. But I don't remember if they give you a gauge enhancement or a, or a little string. That I don't remember. Do, do you know if you get like, infinite many states because you get infinitely many order for singularities or before or because you get. Uh... The order for singularities are fixed. I'm taking k, this k here, ah, okay. this is Yeah, no, it should be something more along the lines of. What happens in equal for super jammy? That you are taking the DC brain, the work volume, you are quantizing it in a strongly curved regime, and this should dramatically change the quantization for flat space okay. in such a way that you actually get a you know, number of it. It should change dramatically. Thanks. Yeah. That, that's the same. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I was wondering uh, if this uh, emergent string could be a dual regime of the regime in which the vacuum energy of ADS go to zero and in which there should appear a tower of states, light uh, store. If, if you trust ADS CFT, that should happen because I'm moving in the conformal manifold and there are theories telling me that the central charge in the conformal manifold doesn't change. And the central charge is measuring for me the ADS scale in Planck units and that means that the ADS scale in Planck units is fixed in any in the limit I'm taking. So this is all this should not happen, at least given this. But you are, you are going in the limit in the regime in which the sphere become. Uh, yeah. No, 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 the sphere is white. I'm not changing that. Okay. The sphere is all white. Yeah. Rather, you should think about these deformations really as taking the B and the C fields, integrated on the blow ups, and this is an axiom that I can change. This is what I'm changing, this axiom. In fact, this is going outside of the orbifold point. The orbifold point is only if the integral of B is 1 over k. It's exactly 1 over k. 
So whenever I change this, I go up from the over four point. So my string theory construction is not valid. Okay. Thanks. <coughs> I have one question. In this last part where you were um, doing the sort of toy model of n equals four theories where the KK spectrum looks different, did you prove that um, if the BPS states all scale with n, um, I mean, I'm wondering what kind of assumptions you made in this toy model. Uh, did you sort of rule out exotic theories with that property? Did you do something short of that, but prove something within some set of assumptions? Like, how am I supposed to view this, this result? Um, so essentially, yeah, really what I'm doing is allowing for scale separation in equal four. I'm forcing it, so allowing this kind of uh, weird respect to BPS operators. And I mean, I'm not ruling it out. What I'm finding is that it will be in clash with the sharpened distance conjecture. Now one could try to make modifications. And if I, for instance, notice that, like, in this case, as I said, one should worry about this caveat here. In the other one, the violation is in the CFD. I trust the CFD. Next. Uh, two colors, you only see the upper ones when you're in the ES, and the higher, uh, the higher speed tower walks, you move to the CFD regime, right? You don't see them from like the other side, or do you? You see them, it's not just you don't control them. So from the point of view of the ES, I have here the string. But what, what I mean should happen mm -hmm. is that as the string becomes tensionless, this dot should not be valid anymore. It should slide. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. That if like the higher spin point from the CFT region was there when you're moving in the direction of the string, the, your uh, lighter tower would be like the higher spin yes. one. Yes, yes, yes. In fact, something that is kind of bothering of all these models is to notice that in that direction the KK tower is white. Yeah. So I don't get a string with the KK tower coming together at all. It's changed completely. Maybe. Okay. Thanks. Any further questions? Okay, let's thank Jose again.